good evening sir good evening all uh, this is chandra mohan physiotherapist from uh, exercise testing and prescription organization shortly known as exrx india i welcome you all for this uh, post graduation entrance test free online coaching and i apologize because we have cancelled two more classes last friday classes and uh, this monday classes due to some unavoidable circumstances and uh, we are having this second dr arun and uh, i welcome all the participants and uh, i welcome our resource person dr arun who is former uh, principal of uh, pg college of physiotherapy and uh, i also thank professor duna and uh, dr rupesh for their support now i welcome uh, dr arun and request him to start the session please sir thank you very much sir so good evening students i think uh, we are continuing from the last class so as, as i told you in the last class we today our session is all about the musculoskeletal special test so shall we go into the classes before going well into the class i just want to give a brief introduction about special test what is special test do the special test or the confirmatory test absolutely no the special test are not the confirmatory test because sometimes it gives a 100% accuracy that your special test is okay but sometimes it is not giving a 100% accuracy likewise like uh, like you, you take a x ray of a patient comes with a severe low back pain and you can find there is a mild mild osteophyte on the patient complaints severe low back pain but some patient doesn't have a low back pain but when you take x ray he has some major osteophyte so the special test are also like that if the special test is positive it doesn't says that it is a accurate diagnosis but when you find the special test along with the clinical symptoms then you can get the special test is accurate whereas the other advantage of the special test is the special test rule out the other conditions for example if you have a shoulder pathology and you are doing a special test we are going to find out whether it is involvement of the muscle involvement of the bone involvement of the ligaments involvement of other structures that can be identified through the special test right so that's the main advantage of uh, using the special test we can we can we can easily diagnose what is the condition as well as we can also uh, re remove the cap which is not functioning that condition also we are able to remove right so most of the kind of special test what i am going to display here in the classes i took from the orthopedic uh, physical therapy assessment david maggi it is one of the excellent book where you can find all the special tests though there are variety of textbooks which gives you lot of special tests but this book is absolutely great uh, in this session what we are going to witness is we have uh, i have just put some special tests Uh, questions which I am going to ask you some special test the name or sometimes other name of the special test also or sometimes I will just show the symptoms you are supposed to find out what is the special test name and, and to relax you I just put some pictures and you are supposed to say what is that uh, some pictures are absolutely okay for the special test but some pictures are 90% percent only a 50-50 chance of that picture so don't find fault in the pictures uh, so same as last class kindly answer in the message box so that uh, i just uh, explain right so here is your first question during a foraminal compression test if the patient complains a pain in the opposite direction which uh, of these is called as either it is a, uh, a spurling test or a cervical border test reverse spurling test or upper limb tension test so how to do this test is uh, described in this picture when you ask the patient to sit erect and the examiner keeps a hand above the head ask the patient to do side flexion and then compress it usually the patient with the no root pathology complains pain on the side you are going to press it right on your left side you are going to press it the left side the patient has pain but if the patient complains pain on the opposite side it means a muscular problem right so what is the name of the special test i think everybody can answer thank you message your answers please 
Yes, it is B, it is reverse polling test, right? So, because polling test, this is an example of polling test, polling test is to produce a compression and you are able to find out if the patient is having a radiating pain because of cervical pathology. And here, this special test, where the patient complains pain on the opposite side, it may be a muscular problem. So, this is called as reverse polling test. So we move on to the second question. And what is the name of this special test? You please type it. I don't have answers here. So um, more or less okay. So here the examiner palpates on the patient's leg. So what is the name of the special test? Any guess? Oh, wow. This is called as the brachial plexus compression test, where patient or the examiner has to compress the brachial plexus on the on the lateral side of the neck and to identify if the patient is having any brachial plexus symptoms. Right? This is called as brachial plexus test. Although this test is not commonly used, but this is one of the common tests. Right. When you apply a maximum cervical compression test uh, to identify a vertebral artery compression, you should be told for bare seconds 26 centimeters. Usually, maximum cervical compression test is done to identify the any neurological problem, right? So make a patient sit erect and do lateral flexion, examiner stands behind the patient and do a compression. When you do a compression on the neck, the patient's nerve or no, or no neurovascular bundles gets compressed and the patient has symptoms here. But if you hold it for some more time, you are able to identify, uh, you are able to identify the neurovascular symptoms, like vertebral artery involvement. So what, how many seconds we are supposed to hold it? So, D, 5 to 10 seconds is the wrong answer. Any guess? Any guess? It's 30 to 40 seconds, 60 seconds, 20 to 30, or 5 to 10. C, 20 to 30 seconds. Any right answers? I see, so 20 to 30 seconds is the correct answer. So, when you compress on the lateral side, we are going to close the uh, neurovascular structures and thereby you are going to test whether the vertebral artery is compressed or not. When the vertebral artery is compressed and hold it for 30 seconds, the patient will have dizziness, nausea, like these symptoms or the patient will exhibit all the neurovascular symptoms and you can say it is a confirmatory test for the vertebral artery compression. There are many tests to identify the vertebral artery compression. One of the tests is maximum cervical compression test. Next question is, question number three, the patient is seated with arm abduction at 90 degrees, elbow fully flex, arm extended at the shoulder, and then elbow is extended. If the radicular pain felt, this test is positive. So what is the name of the test? I will show the picture also. So make the patient sit direct and ask the patient to bend the, uh, lift, uh, bend the shoulder and the elbow, and then do, uh, do the extension of the uh, elbow with light extension of the shoulder. So if the patient feels pain, then this test is positive. The name of the test is Michael test, Elvis test, Corning test, or Bacolis test. What is the name of the test? C is Corning test, is a wrong answer. It's not Corning test. Right? I'll give you one more clue. This test is a resemblance of our upper limb tension test. It is similar to the upper limb tension test, right? So it's not Bacoristis. Let me just put Bacoristis in the more picture later. So it is called as Bicoristis. So what is upper limb tension test? Everyone knows that upper limb tension test is to identify which nerve is involved in the uh, cervical radiglobe body. Either it is a median nerve, radial nerve, or ulnar nerve, right? So you can do different different positions and to identify which nerve is involved. 
and pitch nerve is injured because of that. So that's how uh, this is one of the modification of the upper limb tension test. And what is the name of this person? This actually this is half only. This one full. Yes. 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 Babers, how Babers is applied in the shoulder? Very nice picture, sir. So many pictures are also coming here. Right, this test is called as loading tense test. Loading tense test, right? Right, so this, how, what is the use of this test is to identify Biceptal uh, rupture. So we have to ask the patient to sit in this position and ask the patient to do isometric contraction of the biceps. So ask the patient to do contraction of the biceps alternatively and the examiner has to palpate the biceps. So you have to keep your hand over here and palpate the biceps and find out which biceps is not active. The biceps is active, then there is no problem. If the biceps is not active or mildly active, there's a rupture of the Long head of biceps. This is for the smoothing test test. Okay. Question number four. When the patient in sitting position sustained a full neck and head rotation with extension to right and left is what? So this is also one of the tests to identify the vertebral artery involvement. It's Barry your sign, Halifax maneuver, Horn's test or Declan's test. Barry Liu sign, Halpix Manier, Horn's test or Beatman's test? Beatman's test is the right answer. If, if the patient, okay, well, this is a static test to identify the vertebral artery involvement, right? So you have to ask the patient to do uh, sitting position, sustain the full neck and head rotation, extensions. Extension and do right rotation, left rotation, and you find, you find the patient have dizziness. Or, or, or nausea, then you can say it is a vertebral artery involvement, right? Whereas Barry Leo sign is that ask the patient to do the same portion with side flexion is the Barry Leo sign. Halpix maneuver is same position where the patient just do full head, neck and head rotation, no extension, nothing, just do the head, uh, neck, uh, extension and rotation. Only this will cause vertebral artery symptoms is a Halpix maneuver. Barry Leo sign is you have to add instead of extension, you have to add the side flexion. With extension is weekly stress. So uh, question number five, the test we examines the pectoral membrane is so the pitman's distraction test, lateral shear test, short pusher test, or Barry's test. Which test? What is the name of the test which examines the pectoral membrane? Just do this while this the lateral shear test is wrong. Who will test A, B, C, D? So, before going into the answers, I just took what is a tectoral membrane. Tectoral membrane is the extension of the posterior longitudinal ligament. As you know, the vertebra, vertebra, the whole vertebra from the cervical to the sacrum or to the boxes, we have only six ligaments in there which supports the vertebra. And the posterior longitudinal ligament, which runs from the sacrum to the cervical spine, when the cervical spine it is turned, it has a tectoral membrane. What is the role of the pectoral membrane? It stabilizes the cervical vertebra as well as it stabilizes the upper cervical vertebra and prevents excessive translation. Excessive flexion also it prevents, excessive extension also this tectoral membrane prevents. That is the main uh, role of the pectoral membrane, right? So pectoral membrane is very important. And the answer for this question is Petsman's distraction test is the answer for the 
uh, this is the name of the exam, uh, pectoral nerve exam. So we ask the patient to make a supine lying. Uh, examiner pulls one hand in the occiput, other hand in the jaw, and examiner do a mild distraction at the deep extension. So when the patient feels pain or some discomfort, it indicates the test is positive. This is called as Petman's distraction test. Although this is very, very uncommon test, which we are going to do just for your learning and just for them. Right, the sixth question is patient sit with arm medially rotated, forward flex to 90 degrees. Examiner grasps the patient's elbow and axially loads the tumors into a proximal distraction while maintaining the axial loading. The examiner moves the arm horizontally across the body, right? So make the patient sit, arm medially rotated, forward flex to 90 degrees. Examiner grasps the patient's elbow and the axial load and the humerus in the proximal direction while maintaining the axial loading. The examiner moves the arm horizontally, cross flexion or horizontal contraction across the body. I will show the picture of what the examiner does. So, the examiner holds the patient's arm and just pushes backwards. That is a simple term I just explained. Uh, so, what is the, the, the name of the test? A push pull test, not tool stress test, jerk test, or circumduction test. So, this test usually done to identify posterior instability of the shoulder. So when the patient has a posterior instability, we are able to identify, right? The patient has a posterior instability. So this patient will develop the symptoms like a pain or you can find some laxity here. So that indicates uh, the posterior instability. And the answer for this test is jerk test. Cushion, uh, it's jerk test to identify the posterior instability. Right, very, very easy question in this whole, uh, whole slides. So what is the name of this test? This test is to identify the total rupture of biceps. Pop eyes in, very good. When you ask the patient to do a elbow flexion, there is a help bulging of biceps here. That is a Popeye's end. So it's, it indicates the bicep, total rupture of biceps. So I think uh, 90s kid would enjoy the Popeye part. Popeye is one of the best examples to identify the long head of biceps rupture. Right, we move on to the next question. The patient stands while examiner forward flex the arm to 90 degrees and then forcibly medial rotates and uh, rotates the shoulder, right? So arm flex 90 degrees and forcibly medial rotates the shoulder like this. So what is the name of the test? Is it Hawkins Kennedy test, knee impingement test, rose test or clunk test? Okay. So one of the common tests which we use it for the uh, shoulder impingement syndrome, especially supraspinal test. When you do this test and the patient says pain, it's a confirmatory test. It is called as Hopkins Kennedy test. Very, very good. When you have to put the correct answers, very good. Hopkins Kennedy test. So the same position when the patient is extended, fully flexed and do the medial rotation and, it, uh, and, and you twist the arm with the, uh, with the elbow in full flexion, that is called as knee impingement test. Uh, both of these tests are confirmatory tests for the spasmodic impingement syndrome or any impingement in the shoulder. Shoulder impingement syndrome. Both of these tests are confirmatory tests. If any any patient comes with a shoulder pain, severe impingement, especially on the anterior side, you can do this either Hopkins Kennedy test or knee impingement test. You are able to give a hundred percent diagnosis that this is a spasmodic impingement syndrome. Right, what is the Gilras sign of a test for? So, which uh, this, this sign is for which muscle? So, supraspinatus tendinitis, bicep tendinosis, triceps tendinitis, or subscapular tendinitis. Before going to that, I'll just explain you ask the patient to lift a weight of uh, uh, three to four kgs, ask the patient to lift on, 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 on forearm flexion, and ask the patient to bring it slowly. Right, so you ask the patient to do flexion with the weight and then bring it slowly. The patient has severe pain. 
So this test is done for what condition? Is it for basic class parameters, biceps, triceps, or subscapulars? Is it for biceptal tendinitis? Joker. Is it for biceptal tendinitis? Tendinosis. Right? So patient with the biceps problem. The patient was not able to do the test. It is called as Pinterest sign. We move on to the next question is question number nine. Patient in standing position with the arm elevated to the plane of scapula to 160 degrees. So 160 degrees, the plane of scapula, the patient arm is elevated. Against assistance of the examiner, patient is asked to medially rotate extend arm downwards as a climbing ladder. So as the patient has to work as a climbing ladder, right? So bringing like this. And patient looks like when you assume that you are climbing a ladder. That is the position we are going to maintain here. So, what is uh, this test explains? Whether it is explains bicep tendinitis, pectoralis minor weakness, subscapular tightness, or latissimus dorsal weakness. Right? Patient stands, arm elevated in the plane of scapula. Assume that you are going to try or you are going to do a later climb. So, what is this test for? Picture also. So this test is for lattice dorsal. Right? So this is the position you are supposed to maintain. Like up, you think that you are going to climb the ladder, and when you observe it, this abnormality in the lattice muscle. This is this test is for the lattice dorsal weakness. Or the patient was unable to hold it in position. The patient finds severe weakness. This test is for the Latissimus dorsi muscle. Check how many of you told the correct answer. Nobody has to. That's good. Right, question number 10. Examiner palpates the patient made a little Very, very easy question. The patient's forearm is passively supinated and the elbow and wrist are extended by the examiner. The examiner palpates the patient's made a little Patient's forearm is passively supinated. The elbow and wrist are extended by the examiner. It's a gold force test, Mills manual, or not this, or frozen test. A, 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 right, very, very good. So, A is a medial epicondyl. When you pass the medial epicondyl, obviously everyone says it is a gold force elbow test. Whereas Mills manual or the frozen test is to identify the tennis elbow. That is lateral epicondylitis. You have to palpate the lateral epicondyl, ask the patient to forcibly extend the wrist, or ask the patient to extend with full flexion. That indicates the pain in the lateral epicondyl for the tennis elbow. And one more test for the tennis elbow is also the middle finger extension test. When you ask the patient to patient to raise only the middle finger against assistance, if the patient complains pain on the lateral Elbow or lateral epicondyl that indicates it is a tennis elbow, right? Extensor carpe radialis gravis gets injured here. Okay, what is the name of the special test? Or what is the sign? What is the sign? Every church will pass the whole list. Very sign, very, very good. Giridia, Giridia Supraja. Excellent. Could you please tell me if it's now gets injured here? Any guess? Okay. So why I want to put here, uh, especially this special test is, there are two things in this special test. Some textbook says it is a medial nerve injury. Some textbook says it's a under nerve injury. Right. I will explain what is medial nerve, what is ulnar nerve. So when you ask the patient to bend all the fingers, the patient was not able to flex the fingers. Because of medial nerve injury, the patient was not able to flex the fingers, especially the flexor which of profundus, flexor which of superficial was not working. So the patient was not able to flex the fingers, whereas the ulnar nerve supply was good. So they are able to flex the lateral fingers, whereas the medial uh, three fingers they are not able to move indicates it is a medial nerve injury. Whereas some textbook says that when you ask the patient to extend the fingers, 
Whereas ulna now is weakened. So the patient was not able to extend because of weakened ulna now. So the patient was not able to extend the lateral two fingers, whereas he was able to extend the medial and the lateral three fingers, where he was not able to do it. Lateral two, the medial two fingers. So it is not ulna now is also. So there are two parts. The theory is here. And both of them is called Benediction test is for medial now. Benediction test is for ulna now. If you ask the patient to flex all the fingers and the patient was not able to flex the three finger, it is called a multiplication test and it is because of the medial injury. Whereas if you ask the patient to extend the finger, the patient was not able to extend the ring finger, the little finger, it is due to ulna nerve injury. Okay. Some textbook says it is medial nerve, some textbook says ulna nerve, right? So don't confuse with it, but both the nerves are correct. But if your MCQ asks you, uh, as medial nerve and ulna nerve, that is your luck only. The examiner, what he thinks, that, that only he will give answers. You cannot go and argue with the examiners. Right, so we are moving to the half of the question was over. We are moving to the question number 11. If the patient is unable to do a pin, tip to tip pinch, instead he has abnormal pulp to pulp pinch of the index finger, which nerve is pathology? So we ask the patient to do tip to tip. Yes, he was unable to do it, he is doing pulp to pulp. So if the patient was not able to do tip to tip, whereas he is going for abnormal pinch. So is it ulnar nerve injury, radial nerve injury, or anterior enclosure nerve injury, or axial nerve? So what nerve is injured here? Yeah. B is the correct answer. It is an anterior introsious nerve injury because the patient was not able to do a perfect O shape. Right? So it is an anterior introsious nerve injury. So the patient was not able to do a tip to tip, whereas they are going for a pulp to pulp. Right? So it is an anterior introsious nerve injury. Sparta Mudia. Question number 12. When you ask the patient to make a fist, if the distal phalanx of one of the finger does not flex, then this sign is positive because of rupture of flexor digital profundus syndrome. It usually occurs in the ring finger. Like this, when you ask the patient to make a fist, the middle finger only does not fix this. So what is this sign for this? So Batson sign, Murphy sign, sweater finger sign, or pinner sign? Batson sign. B. Murphy sign is the wrong answer. So the, the finger looked like this. The patient was not able to flex the distal interplanetary joints, whereas the finger was extended. It is because of flexor the stone profundus rupture. Any other correct answers? So I just just hold this. C. Sweater finger sign. This sweater finger sign. It's called a sweater finger sign. I don't know why they gave us a sweater finger sign. Maybe the people who does sweaters might be knowing about this very well. Right, so far we have crossed only half questions. There are a lot of half is there. Which test is to identify ulna nerve palsy? Carpal compression sign. Form and sign, Fallon's test, or voice or test. So name the test, Alna no palsy. B, form and sign, very, very good. Form and sign is the Alna no palsy. Okay, what is form and sign? And the pictures. When you ask the patient to hold the card and just pull up the card, the patient was not able to hold with the thumb, whereas the patient goes for flexion of the thumb. So it's a starting question, ask the patient to hold it on the lateral pinch. When you just pull it up, the patient was not able to hold here. The patient flexes the thumb, tries to hold it. So that is called as from and side. So it indicates ulna nerve has. Ulna nerve patient was not able to hold it. Right, question number 14. So this is, so we are going to the lower left side. The child lies supine with the knees flexed and the hips flexed to 90 degrees. Positive test indicates if one knee is higher than another. So this is for the congenital hip dislocation. Now they turned it as a 
development and displacement of people. So, what is the name of this test? Is it barrel test, auto test, galicicide, or piston test? I think there is a picture here. When you ask the patient to do a group line question, when you look at the knee, the level of the knee will be one knee is lower than the other. So, what is the name of the test? Is it galicicide? Is it very, very good and right answers? There is other tests like Barlow's test and Ortolanis test is also used to diagnose the congenital dis dislocation of it. Now, they are termed it as a developmental dysplasia of it because the researcher has told that there is no dislocation occurs congenitally. Whereas there is a developmental malfunction in the hip indicates it is a developmental dysplasia of it. So, it is as a BDH. Instead of CDH, which we studied earlier, now the new textbook comes with a BDH, developmental dysplasia of it. Mobile compression test is to identify which muscle tightness is the IT band tightness, rectus humoris tightness, gluteus maximus tightness, rectus tightness. Before we go into the answers, I will just explain what is mobile compression test. So, you ask the patient to lie in the supine line, ask the patient to bend both hip and knee joint to the 90 degrees. Examiners palpate the lateral condyle of the femur. Ask the patient to extend the hip as well as extend the knee. Around 30 degrees of knee extension, the patient has severe pain on the lateral part of the knee. So, what is this the signals? IT band or rectus or rectus humoris or gluteus maximus, right? So, it's obvious that for gluteus maximus, no rectus involvement. Either it is a combination between rectus or IT band, and everyone says IT band, or also it is IT band type. Right? IT band tightness, they, apart from the robust test, we have noble compression test. So, robust test is, is the wave graph, how we are going to stretch the IT band. Same way, when we do that, the patient uh, knee will not go to the other knee, the patient knee is hanging on the side. That indicates there is a tightness in the IT band. Right, the interesting question. This is also not 100% accurate as per the step in the test. What is the name of this special test? Uh, let's say the patient has to hold uh, forearm over the hip. I was not able to get the picture, accurate picture. What is the name of this special test? The patient has to keep accurately over the hip. It's not unknown no tension test. Okay, this test is to identify uh, C4, C5, C6 nerve lesion. If the patient has a C4, C5, C6 no problem, and if you ask the patient to keep the forearm over the head, the patient finds little comfortable. The patient finds relaxation. So, uh, if the test is positive, the patient has relaxation. So, Johar Minor put the correct answer, Bacolish side, a Bacolish test, right? Test. Is it Bacolis test or Bacolis test? Right? Very, very good. Good, right? But the photo is not very much appropriate. The patient has to, the only has to keep the remote or his hand has to be placed in his hand. Right? So the question was too big. Uh, still, the answer is very small. The patient sits with the knee bent over the edge of the table and the feet is dangling. The examiner places an arm under the patient's side to act as a fulcrum. The fulcrum arm is moved from distal to the proximal along with the thigh as gentle pressure is applied to the dorsum of the knee with the examiner's opposite hand. Positive test indicates idiosoyal tightness, stress fracture of the shaft of femur, hip rotator tightness, or hamstring tightness. We can look at the pictures. Patient has to sit erect. The examiner has to keep one hand under the under the uh, the thigh bone, other hand operates over the dorsum of the knee and then press it down. So if the patient complains pain or difficulty, what does it indicate? It's the tightness, hip rotator tightness, stress fracture, or hamstring tightness. It is a stress fracture of female, right? So, especially the elderly person, 
sometimes you are not able to identify the fracture of the in the patient just comes to us with the complaint of only pain in the thigh but when you do when you assess you are not able to identify what is the problem especially the elders you are able to identify it it is a osteoporotic changes so when you test this test the patient complains pain you may have 50 50 chance of there's a fracture in their finger so don't try too much and make the patient's bone grow try my Right, we are moving into the question number 17. Patient lies to pain and the exam of holds both the legs while flexing the patient's hip and knees to the 90 degrees. If there is a posterior instability, a posterior lag of tibia is seen. If the manual press is applied over the tibia, posterior displacement may increase. Okay? So ask the patient to lie to pain and keep the leg here and you just observe it and see the displacement. So there is some posterior. sag of the tibia is seen because of posterior instability when you apply some manual pressure more posterior instability is identified so what is the name of this special test the godfrey test anterior thoracic test posterior sag sign or step up sign so everyone carry it because i said posterior so you think okay it is posterior sag sign so say sag sign is there but is not for this test So, ye Godfrey test, right? Godfrey test is the right answer. I think one person has given the correct correct answer. A patient lies on pain, and you find uh, it is a posterior displacement of the tibia. Right? It's your test. What is the name of this special test? Okay, one, two, three, eight guesses. Don't carry it with your hands. Just like your fist. This is also not appropriate picture. So somewhat okay, but not appropriate as per your normal test. This is for shoulder condition. Yeah, this I have to learn. Oh, very good. This is Douglas test. So this test is Douglas test. This test is called as Douglas test to identify anterior shoulder dislocation. Patient comes with anterior shoulder dislocation. When you ask the patient to touch the opposite shoulder, patient was not able to do that. If the patient finds difficulty or patient was not able to touch the opposite shoulder, it indicates it is a anterior shoulder dislocation or a Douglas test is possible. Excellent, excellent answer. Right, we move on to question number eighteen. Patient lies in a prone position with the knee flexed to 90 degrees. Patient thigh is well anchored to the examiner table with the examiner's knee. Examiner medially and lightly rotates the tibia, combined with compression while while noting any restriction or excess in movement. Right, so make the patient lie on the prone leg with the knee flexed 90 degrees and hold it tightly. And examiner should move the tibia medially and laterally, laterally to identify. What success I got, especially it is to test meniscus. So, what is the name of this? It is Apley's test, Metcalfe's test, Baumstrom test, or Brush test. Very good, Apley's test. So, it is called as usually we we may call as Apley's compression test. Apley's distraction test is also that instead of compression, we can also distract it and identify it. If you compress and do the medial lateral rotation of tibia, and the patient complains pain. Then it indicates it's a meniscal injury. If you distract it and do medial lateral rotation, and the patient complains pain, it may indicate a collateral ligament injury, or sometimes you can say it is an anterior cruciate ligament injury also. Right? But its compression uh, pain indicates a meniscal injury. Very very good. Excellent. Okay. There are all these tests uh, identifies effusion in the knee, right? The knee joint effusion occurs because of many causes, maybe a fall, mild trauma, or or any pathology in the knee joint, or uh, when you go for some bursitis, which also causes joint effusion. But all these tests uh, identifies joint effusion, except 
say indentation test, flat tab test, fluctuation test, or flat test. Which test does it give you a uh, joint efficient? Very, very good. It's a flat test because flat test is done to identify the compromise of petal. Indentation test, or petal tab test, or fluctuation test, all these is when you tap the petal, petal will force. So it shows there's a synovial effusion in the joint and there's a there's some pathology in the joint. Flat test is to diagnose petal of the pain syndrome or also called as contro malicia petal. Right. So very easy question. Thomson test is to assess rupture of what? So Thomson test, not Thomas test. Please note it down. Thomson test. It's a rectus tumor is rupture, tendo achilles, peroneus tendon, or gracilis. I say it is not Thomas test, it is Thompson test. Thomas test is for rectus tumors. It is Thompson test. I'll show the picture and you can identify which is the correct test. So, very easy test. Take the patient in a prone line and then just squeeze the cuff. If the patient produces plantar flexion, it indicates the tendon is intact. If the patient is not doing a plantar flexion, or when you contract the cuff, the patient voluntarily, involuntarily do a plantar flexion. If the patient is not able to do a plantar flexion, that indicates it's a tendon actually rupture or damage to the tendon actually or injured tendon actually. It indicates Right, so please, please be confirmed that it is not Thomson, uh, Thomson test, it is not Thomas test. When you read through your question papers, your competitive exams, please read the questions thoroughly. Okay, don't carry away with the first word. Okay, this is Thomas test, I know, just put the wrong answer. What is the name of the test? No, it's not uh, Salman Khan. What is the name of the special test? I guess Yes. It is called as isometric scapular isometric test to identify the rotators involvement, involvement of rotators, like right? any prothesis and previous minor. So, between the pieces, T is minor, get involved. The patient was not able to hold this portion for 30 to 40 seconds. The patient was unable to hold this portion, which indicates the patient had medial rotators problem. So we move on to the question number 21. Patient's foot is passively dorsiflex with a knee extender. Pain in the cough muscle indicates positive DVT. Positive DVT. So what is the name of the test? DVT test. Burgess says, Forman sign, Popper says, Nelson. DVT is very easy, right? Uh, not Burgess test. Sign, 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 sign. So you just ask the patient, lying in the supine, and then you are going to do a passive dorsal flexion of the foot, and the patient have pain. That indicates the patient have a deep pain from most of the called as foam and set. It's very easy to use, foam and set. So if you find that patient is a prolonged bedridden patient, or the patient have a tight uh, uh, cough problem, and you just stretch the cup and you are able to identify the patient had a problem in the cup. That is DVT. Okay, question number 22. Examiner runs a pointed object along with the plantar aspect of the food. There will be extension of the big toe and the abduction of the foot. It's very easy. For studying in the second semester, it's also. Stop it, can say. Or Gabinsky sign, or flip sign, or skyline sign. Gabinsky, very, very good. Gabinsky sign. 
usually used to identify the extraprandial tract symptoms, right? If you are not able to any project uh, objects, my my neuro lecturer, lecturer neurosurgeon used to do with his parkies. He just used the parkie and uh, identify whether there is a involvement of that. What is the name of the special test? Usually, the cranes will stand in this position. What's the name of the special test? So, this test helps to identify the patient with the SA joint problem or the patient with the pelvic problem. Right? When you ask the patient to stand in a single leg, the patient complains of pain or difficulty in holding, it is called as the uh, positive of the test. Very, very good. Lummy ghost test. Excellent. Dr. Mayna has given an excellent answer. Usually, the flamingo will stand like this question. When you type Google flamingo for it, it looks in, in this question. Right. Question number 23. A patient in a supine and flexes the head against assistance, cough or attempt to sit up with the hand resting behind the head. Positive means the umbilicus does not remain in a straight line, and when the umbilicus contracts, indicating pathology in the abdominal right? So ask the patient to do cough or do sit up, the umbilicus does not remain in the straight line. So this indicates umbilical pathology, uh, abdominal muscle pathology. What is the name of this? this? It's a Beaver sign, Babinski sign, Pip sign, Sesson sign. So, A Beaver sign is the right axis. Beaver sign is the right axis. So this is Beaver sign is used, usually used to test the weakness of the abdominal muscles. So, you just ask the patient to cough and you can find out the muscle power grading when you do it for zero, there is no contraction. For one abdominal muscle, when you ask the patient to cough and observe the, uh, the movement of the abdominals, if the patient abdomen moves, then it indicates that the muscle pole is not. And the two is mild contraction, you ask the patient to lift the head and find out any movement in the abdominals. So for 0 1, we are able to use cough as a muscle pole assessment. Okay, with the patient in supine position, hip is medial rotated, erected, and the knee is extended. The examiner flexes the hip until the patient complains of pain or tightness in the back or back of the hip. So, patient in supine position, hip is medial rotated, erected, and the knee is extended. The examiner flexes the hip until the patient complains of pain or tightness in the back or back of the hip. Pro-knee test, slump test, nasty use test, or sober hall test. It's a modification of SLR. It's called as massive use test. So SLR, SLR is a straight leg test, which has to be done passively. So we have to lift the patient's leg and then do, uh, do this a straight leg raise. And if the patient complains pain in the posterior knee, it is a hamstring tightness. If the patient complains pain in the back, it indicates some low back pain problem. If it's radiating, it indicates it is a intervertebral disc collapse. So, in addition to the SLR, when you do hip uh, addiction and medial rotation, and the patient complains pain or tightness in the back or back of the leg, it is called as lasting eustis. So, many of you have spoken correct answers. Lasting eustis is one of the confirmatory tests for low back pain. So what is the name of the test? This test is to identify whether the substapularis muscle is weak or not. This test is to identify substapular next muscle is weak or not. Lift off sign. Very good. Excellent. Excellent. Lift off sign. So to identify the substapular is muscle involvement. So just make the patient to keep his hand behind it, ask the patient to do extension. So if the patient was able to do, it indicates that the substapularis muscle is normal. If the patient was not able to do, it indicates there is some weakness. Excellent, excellent, very good. Same SLR, 
uh, here I'm just going to ask which now we are going to test. Okay, so the lot of mod increases in SLR, right? So uh, SLR test with flexion of hip, extension of knee, anchor dorsiflexion, foot version, toe extension, issue stitch, which now. SLR test with flexion of knee, extension of knee, anchor dorsiflexion, foot version, toe extension, issue stitch, which now. It's a sciatic now. Tibial now, sural now, common color. Sciatic, tibial now, sural now, common color. All this is not just for sciatic. But here we are going to do food cross infection, active cross infection, food immersion, and toe extension. So this it helps to stretch the tibial nerve. So when you do this test, the patient complete pain, it indicates a TPL low involvement. Good at all days. Oh, this is not a thank you slide. I just want the name of the specialist. Don't think Tamana is in Alaska. The slides are over. What is the name of the test? Normal, you just missed one word. Both of you have just missed one It's not balance system. Balance is half correct, half correct. Reverse balance is very good. Rashmita is good, accurate answer. So it's a reverse balance test. Balance test is to identify the median nerve injury. So you have to do. This is the phalanx test, right? So when you, when you keep this, and the patient complains of arbitral syndrome, the patient will not be able to hold it. The patient has symptoms present on the patient has symptoms present on the medial three, right? Two three of fingers. That is the phalanx test. Reverse phalanx test is Namaskar. So when you keep, ask the patient to keep in this position, Tamana uh, is not keeping it. Actually, you are supposed to keep at the shoulder 90 degrees, elbow flex to 90 degrees, and the wrist is fully flexed. Uh, fully extended. So when you do this test fully extended, the patient will find uh, difficulty in keeping it for more than 30 seconds. There will be a uh, vascular symptoms. Patient have pain or weakness that indicates a phalanx test, right? So it is for to assess the median nerve involved. Right, so that is the end of the question session. I have I have taken all the questions and uh, most of the pictures from orthopedic physical assessment which was written by David J. Maggie. So uh, if the students wants to learn specialties and if you want to specialize in orthopedic physical therapy in MPT, please buy this book and keep it. It's an excellent book uh, which uh, your orthopedic physical should buy and should keep it. Right? Although it's only 1000 rupees, uh, it's not too much also. Everyone can buy it. Uh, don't buy, uh, don't put a photocopy or don't uh, buy into the soft copies. Please buy the hard copy and keep it for your references. And uh, that's all for today's class. Uh, any any doubts you can ask, uh, you can ask me. As I say, uh, told you in the last class also, I have given a few questions to Mr. Chandramohan sir. Uh, probably he will circulate in the group. You are supposed to do answers. All these questions focus only on the special test, some uh, special test only. So please, uh, if you are going to attend the test, you please read out the textbook of Maggie and then just start writing. The next class is next week, like next week Wednesday, we are going to see on orthopedic assessment. Uh, I will give you a clue that I am going to take all the orthopedic assessment from the same textbook, textbook of Maggie only. So please read this Maggie first chapter and come and attend this session. So it will be very helpful for you because uh, the, the whole questions, what I'm going to prepare is from the first chapter of David Mike, orthopedic physical assessment. Okay. So next class, we have still one week time is there. Uh, you guys can read at least one or two days, you can finish with the first chapter of the night. Right, till then, uh, take care, be safe, uh, do hand wash, wear proper masks. Thank you very much for your Yes, sir. If there is any doubts uh, you can raise uh, regarding any test which you have uh, discussed, a participant, any doubts? Uh, hello, sir. Yes, sir. So uh, the tenth question, the Benedict sign. Okay. 
Uh, so you said it's either ulnar nerve injury or median nerve injury. Right? Yes, yes. So you said the patient will not be able to flex. Uh, sorry, yeah, extend when, when, the when hand. Ask the patient to. When you ask the patient. Right. So when you ask the patient to flex all the fingers, if the patient was not able to flex the finger, only two fingers are extending. Mm. So the finger flexion was done by flexor ligament profundus and flexor superficial. superficial. Yeah. So this was applied by median nerve. So yes, when sir. you are not able to flex the fingers, it will increase as a median nerve injury. Okay, sir. Some textbook says when you ask the patient to extend the fingers, patient was not able to extend it. So, so but isn't this, that uh, response the gradual nerve responsible? Extension was done by the lumbricus. No, so sir. This lumbricus introduces by major root and ulnar nerve. So the patient was not able to extend fully. So the the, the ulnar nerve palsy, right? So the the last two fingers go for flexion. Ulnar nerve no, palsy. What what are the things the features in the ulnar nerve palsy? Sorry. Ulnar nerve palsy. What are the things? Partial ulnar nerve. Partial black hand, right? So this would be yes, the partial black hand. Yes, sir. That's why it says it's ulnar nerve palsy. So partial black hand. Can you look at the partial black hand? Okay. This is not a black hand, and this is partial black hand because of ulnar nerve palsy. Okay. The patient was not able to extend the fingers. Okay, sir. Some textbook has given, but more. I also read as a immediate nerve injury only. But some textbook, when I go through a few days back, and I found that ulnar nerve also not there. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Any yes, other sir. doubts? Your participants? And also to participants or viewers from uh, YouTube, if you have any doubts, I just post it in the uh, comment section. I will read it in uh, Zoom. Uh, Harley will take one or two minutes, sir. Your no mic is problem. mute, sir. Yeah. No problem, sir. No problem. No questions, participants from Zoom. Yes, sir. No questions in YouTube also, okay. and no questions in uh, yes, sir. And uh, thank you very much, sir. Very interesting pictures. Actually, you have uh, enjoyed. Uh, we always enjoy movie looking at the uh, heroes, but uh, you have seen it in anatomical question and all those things. That's why you have captured uh, pictures like this. I assume, <laughs> and uh, nice, sir. Actually, uh, it may be very useful. So, with the style of Rajnikanth, the pose of uh, uh, Salwan, all those things, they can remember the test very easy way. Thank you so much for those Thanks. wonderful. Uh, Please circulate uh, the question papers, papers and uh, you can find out the answers. Yes, sir. I will. I will give it uh, question papers, uh, questions to the participants later, and I will also doing correction also. Okay, I do sir. correct their answers. So, yes. Uh, that's a hectic work for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, but I don't feel so. But okay, that is good actually. Thank you so much, sir. Thank, thank you, you all thank participants, all viewers, uh, and uh, thank you, Duna Madam, for your help. Uh, good night, all. Take care. Thank you, sir. Bye bye. Bye, sir.